Hello, I'll be moderating this session. My name is Kim Sun Hwa. I'm the executive director of the Kyunggi Solidarity Against Discrimination. We'd like to begin uh, this session, which is titled This is Our Labor. And I think that this might not be a familiar topic to many of you, especially for a discussion session. And when we say that this is our labor, some people might interpret this to mean that it has some negative connotations, saying that this as well is our labor. Why is there the emphasis on this is our labor as well? But I think that if we listen to the presentations focusing on the labor of uh, severely disabled persons, I think that you would come to an understanding of why we have decided to title uh, this session with this name. We would like to hear a brief introduction of all of the uh, participants and panelists before we move on. Hello. I am. Chu Young Ha. I am a PhD a graduate at Ihua Women's University, Department of Social Welfare. It is a pleasure and honor for me to be here. I'm from Dodul Kungriso for Disability Studies. I'm an activist and I'm also a CEO of B Minor. My name is Kim Tohyun. It is a pleasure to meet you. And to my left, please introduce yourself. Hello. It is a pleasure to meet you. I'm from the Korea Council of Centers for Independent Living. I'm Che Yonki. I'm very proud of our center. Yes, I can see that you are very proud of the work that you do. We also have uh, one other panelist online with us. Yes, hello. I'm from the Disability Welfare Policy Division at the Seoul Metropolitan Government. My name is Ko Kwang Hyun. Yes, hello. It is a pleasure to meet you, Director Ko. I know that right now the COVID situation is quite severe in Seoul. Thank you very much for participating in this discussion session. I remember it being 2017 when the Seoul headquarters of the uh, Korea Corporation for Disability Employment was taken over by some of our activists and we have continued to ask for the right to work. And the right to work for the disabled persons has can always been a priority issue for us. And we have continued to ask for the fact that we need to be guaranteed uh, public citizen work. And I believe it was around that time that this became a very foremost issue. I remember the Minister of Employment and Labor also met with the activists at that time, and many of us have stated the need for uh, these kinds of public citizen work and that we have to ask for deinstitutionalization. We wanted to understand how the activists and how the people who were deinstitutionalized are making inroads in society. And particularly, we wanted to understand this from the point of view of the right to work of severely disabled persons who have been deinstitutionalized. That's why we have continued uh, discussions and meetings with the Ministry of Labor. But unfortunately, we have not been able to see this as a key institution or made into a government policy. However, three years ago, beginning in Seoul and last year, beginning in Gyeonggi province, and I understand this year it has been rolled out to all these different provinces have been launching personalized public citizen work. We call it rights-based citizen work. When we say rights-based work, you might wonder what kind of work this actually entails. But I think that our two presenters would do a better job than myself to explain to you the concept behind rights-based work. With that, I would just like to conclude my opening remarks and hand over the microphone to uh, Dr. Ju as the first presenter. And please give Dr. Ju a big round of applause. Thank you very much. I am honored to be a speaker in the session titled, This is Our Labor. I'm going to begin my presentation. I would first like to talk about the international context of employment policies for disabled persons. And then I would like to examine the specific case of providing public works for severely disabled persons. As you may know, when you look at the overall international context, uh, there has been a movement to alleviate, uh, movement to 
eliminate any barriers or discriminations based on disability and to encourage employment of disabled persons. It is very important to understand the international context. You can refer to the International Labor Organization and its various conventions, and it has been stipulated very clear that uh, right to work is basic and fundamental right for people with disabilities as well. So let's take a look at some of the rights related to work that have been announced by ILO. In order to eliminate discrimination, any form of discrimination based on disability, and also to lower the barriers to employment and inclusion of disabled persons in society, ILO International Labor standards have been developed. In 1944, employment transition from war to peace recommendation was adopted. And in 1955, ILO vocational rehabilitation recommendation was adopted. And in 1983, ILO vocational rehabilitation and employment convention uh, number 159 was adopted. And in 1983, Recommendation number 168 was recommended and was adopted. And you can refer to some of the details here. In 1944, as you as I mentioned, the employment recommendation was adopted. This is indeed the first international adoption of recommendation for employment of disabled persons. When you refer to Article 71 of this recommendation, you can see that disabled persons should be provided with all kinds of opportunities for rehabilitation and vocational training and given employment opportunities. When you take a look at the recommendation number 99 adopted in 1955, you can see that there are specific guidelines and recommendations on vocational rehabilitation and training, and these, this has been a basis for many countries' legislations. It is to guarantee equal opportunities to people with disabilities so that persons with disabilities can gain access to employment opportunities. When you look at recommendation number 159, you can see that it recommends state governments to implement formal policies to encourage employment of pe persons with disability. And it emphasizes that such policies need to be reviewed and updated on a regular basis. And it argues that um, disabled persons should be given equal employment opportunities in the open labor market. Furthermore, when you look at the recommendation number 168, which was adopted in 1983, you can see that um, disabled persons should be provided with various employment opportunities and incentives. And also, it stipulates that government authorities should allow these uh, disabled persons to get used to working in the labor market. And in this recommendation 168, there are specific opportunities that should be provided, including financial incentives to employers who are willing to employ disabled persons. And also, it provides specific guidelines on various elimination of various barriers, including physical barriers and other kinds of barriers. As you can see here, there have been various recommendations impl implemented in the international community to guarantee the right to work so that we can promote balance in our society. And such recommendations contributed to legislations in many countries. Next, let's take a look at the right to work for disabled persons announced by the UN. In 1994, a social policy white paper was adopted, and in 1996, the Council of Europe's European Social Charter was adopted, and in, two and in 2000, there was Employment Equality Directive adopted in EU. As you can see here, the UN published a social policy white paper in 1994 to urge equal opportunities uh, that should be provided to disabled persons so that they can engage in productive work and get paid for their work in the labor market. 
And in 1996, the European Social Charter was adopted, which is about social inclusion of disabled persons and helping them become more independent in their living. And in 2000, the Employment Equality Directive was adopted by the EU, and it bans any form of hatred, discrimination, or prejudice against disabled persons in the labor market and in terms of employment. And it also clearly stipulates that there should be convenience and considerations provided to disabled persons so that they can continue to work in the labor market. Then, in 2006, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities was adopted. This is a comprehensive and a complete international convention to promote the rights of persons with disabilities, and it declares that persons with disabilities should be guaranteed the same rights and the same privilege. So the UNCRPD is very important because it is the first international human rights convention for disabled persons. And it um, stipulates the rights to education, employment, mobility, voting rights, and other areas. And it recognizes that there are various barriers to the rights of persons with disabilities. And eliminating such barriers is crucial in order to achieve universal human rights. So this convention is an international agreement to recognize the rights of persons with disabilities. Also, the action plan by the EU provided a foundation, and in 2010, in, 2010, in the European Strategy for Pe Persons with Disabilities, it announces and it declares equal opportunity to participation and equal opportunity for work. Therefore, if you deny equal access to employment opportunities, it is violation of human rights. So the UNCRPD stipulates uh, obligations of state parties so that they can continue to promote the rights of persons with disabilities. And these international agreements and strategies and recommendations have been making a huge influence on uh, policies for disabled persons in various countries, and they have led to various support systems and programs for disabled persons. However, when, you, when we look at the reality in Korea, Disability is still considered a serious barrier for accessibility to employment opportunities, and disabled persons are suffering from um, financial difficulties, especially for those who are severely disabled persons. They are not able to gain a sufficient income, and they may be involved in informal employment or irregular works. Also, employers or community members may have prejudices against disabled persons. So the situation in the Korean labor market has been um, has not been very good. And according to a recent survey, only 37 percent of the disabled persons participate in the labor market, while the national average is more than 70 percent. So you can see that there's a very low level of job market participation. And especially for severely uh, disabled persons, they find it difficult to get access to um, decent job opportunities or information regarding uh, such job opportunities. In this regard, the UN Committee on the Rights of Disabled People with Disability has been recommending the Korean government to continue to make efforts for awareness raising. In particular, the committee makes a recommendation that the government should continue to promote the rights of disabled persons to various uh, stakeholders, and um, it recommends Korea to continue to carry out educational and awareness raising uh, campaigns. So this means that we need to continue to engage in works to, to promote awareness regarding the rights to work for disabled persons. In this regard, I would like to now examine the Public Works Project for Severely Disabled Persons. This project has been an attempt to uh, comply with the recommendations of the UN Committee on the Rights of Disabled Persons. 
this public works project tailored to severely disabled persons began in 2021 in Seoul and Gyeonggi province, and it's been rolling out to other provinces starting this year. Severely disabled persons have been excluded in the labor market, but this project has designated three job domains that can be given to severely disabled persons. The three domains are rights advocacy, culture and art, and awareness raising education. So by employing severely disabled persons in these three areas, the project aims to in increase uh, inclusion and um, participation of severely disabled persons to participate in the labor market so that their right to work can be guaranteed, which is guaranteed by the Constitution. And here, uh, the project aims to serve the severely disabled persons, which means that these disabled persons are not able to maintain their daily living without the support of um, e supporting equipment or uh, the care uh, providers. I'd like to first examine in more detail the three domains of work. So in this project, depending on the types of disability and characteristics, there are three specific work domains, which are um, advocacy work for rights of the disabled persons and arts and culture activities and awareness raising activities. The first work domain is about advocacy activities. Uh, for severely disabled persons, they can carry out performance, performances to, um, to eliminate any discrimination on the basis of disability. They would monitor various rules and regulations of local communities, and they will also monitor any inconveniences or um, challenges faced by disabled persons. The second domain is arts and culture. This is about having severely disabled persons engage in various creative activities such as arts, photography, music, and dance. And they may perform in front of the audience uh, using their body to express their ideas and thoughts. The third domain is um, awareness raising activities in support of disabled persons. So they may offer lectures and they may um, make presentations and they will do performance in front of the audience to raise awareness. So by focusing on these three domains and hiring severely disabled persons in these domains, they can participate in the labor market while they can continue to promote awareness on the rights of disabled persons. So these kinds of activities um, are very important because they contribute to helping the public better understand the situations of disabled persons. Now let's take a look, the, look at the outcome of this project. The, f the first outcome is that uh, the right to work has been provided and guaranteed to severely uh, disabled persons. 260 public jobs were identified, so they were able to work, which is the basic human rights guaranteed by our Constitution. So in 2021, 275 severely disabled persons were hired by Seoul Metropolitan Government, and in Gyeonggi Province, 23 such persons were employed. And this year, in 2022, this project has been expanded. So in Seoul, 350 persons were uh, employed. In Gyeonggi Province, 200 people. And in Chuncheon, 40 people. In Cheonbuk Province, 10 people. And in Gyeongnam Province, 10 people will be hired for this project. So you can see that uh, a total of 692 people will be employed. Um, this year, and it has been expanded nationwide. So this is a very important achievement. Secondly, this project has been helping changing our, the paradigm of work. Now, 
the criteria for labor for severely disabled persons uh, is now more focused on public works, collaboration, and value creation. And there has been a consensus formed at the local government as well as the central government. And the third achievement is that we were able to put in place a social foundation for independent living in the local community. Even during the pandemic, such job opportunities were provided to uh, severely disabled persons, and they were able to serve as members of the local community. However, even though we have had these valuable achievements, when we consider that there are 980,000 severely disabled persons in Korea, I would like to argue that the number of job opportunities, the number of jobs is very, very um, small, and we need to expand and offer more opportunities. I believe that we need to actively adopt and expand more domains of work where severely disabled persons can work and contribute. And there are several recommendations that I'd like to make to improve this project. First of all, I would like to argue that we need at least 10,000 jobs for severely disabled persons based on rights. And secondly, I believe we need um, dedicated staff to operate this project. And third, we need to make sure that this project is consistent and sustainable so that these disabled persons can get these opportunities in a consistent manner. And finally, I like to show you some pictures of um, pictures where you can find that uh, disabled persons were hired by such work. So here there is a performance conducted on the street. It aims to show that um, these disabled persons are legitimate members of the society where they can make contribution. And secondly, you can see this photo where a disabled person was providing education for awareness raising. So they offer education to both disabled and um, so disabled people as well as the other public. So such um, works are carried out by severely disabled persons as part of this project. I hope that this project will continue to expand and roll out throughout the nation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Ju, for the presentation. You've already sent her a round of applause, so I would not have to additionally ask for more applause to be headed to Dr. Chu. Listening to the presentation. And as a moderator, I paid my full attention to this presentation by Dr. Chu, and I learned quite a lot from, his, from her presentation as well. In the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned about the social work uh, white paper. So the social policy white paper announced in 1994 by the UN was quite important uh, because at that time there was a very low level of awareness that disabled persons could make um, equal contribution. But the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, especially the rights related to work, have been provided by this convention. But still, even though we have these agreements, uh, there is a tendency to think that it is rather an abstract concept and what disabled persons can do in the labor market. But I think we can go down to the local level where local communities create job opportunities for severely disabled persons and in turn their work will help boost the rights of disabled persons. So it is a virtual cycle. I wonder if uh, similar job opportunities are provided in Europe or whether such works are recognized as labor as well. If not, then it really means that Korea is actually a forerunner or a pioneer in creating such jobs that can be recognized as labor or work. 
that are provided by uh, disabled persons. And there was a recommendation by the UN Committee on the Rights of Disabled Persons, and um, the committee urged, urged Korea to raise awareness, especially um, and promote the rights of disabled persons for government officials and parliamentarians and the media and general public. But public officials may be quite busy, so this local government-led a campaign and project has been initiated, right? <laughs> I am serving at this um, community center, but I'm also involved in the local government. And in Gyeonggi province last year, we started with a very small scale. Uh, so we only hired 23, but this year we are going to hire more than 200. and. Up until yesterday, we received 17 applications. Of course, these applications were submitted um, on behalf of them by their guardians, but there were many um, people with developmental disabilities and um, the care providers kept on saying, well, my child does not speak and uh, his intelligence level is um, three years old or second grade so they were a lot of they were quite concerned and when we were accepting applications so we said that um, you sh if possible you could come with uh, your child and uh, some of the parents were quite um, frustrated because um, they were not happy about the fact that they the the interviewers would like to see the conditions of uh, their children but that was not our intention. And I said, yes, I understand your frustration, but those who will participate in this project are not you or parents or caregivers, but the disabled persons themselves. And I want to, or we want to explain to the persons concerned what kind of work they would have to do. And then they started to be speaking very softly and they really understood our intention and they showed a lot of interest in these job opportunities. Then you may, I may expect some applause from the audience. Yes. So in Gyeonggi province, they're expanding this program. Last year, we only hired 25, but we had a job fair for disabled persons last year. And the second presenter, Kim, no, Kim Do Hyun from Nodul Kungli, so uh, for disability studies, uh, really helped me a lot. So I believe that his contribution was very important in expanding this program in Gyeonggi province. So let me invite Mr. Kim. Hello, I've been asked to give the second presentation. My name is Kim Do Hyun. That is the title of my presentation that you see on the slide. But what I really would like to say is that many people, especially in government and local government, might think that we would continue to ask them and lobby them to engage in more activities that they might feel are a little bit groundless and baseless. But I would like to provide the evidence and the grounds for why we need to have these discussions and these activities. And I would like to provide uh, the spaces for my thoughts. To begin my presentation, I would like to begin by introducing to you a concept that you might not be familiar with. About two years ago, I went to a discussion seminar where they were talking about right to work. And in preparing for the discussion, I was looking at various different materials and I came across a very unfamiliar concept, which is called unnecessary. It. Is this the first time you've heard this word? This might not be very familiar to you, but I'm sure you've heard of the word precariat, or maybe not. The precariat refers to workers in a state of unstable labor, because the English word precarious means precarious as in unstable. And as you know, in the English language, the word proletariat stands for those people in the working class. The precariat is a amalgamation of precarious and proletariat. 
Similarly, uh, this word has been widely used, especially in the English uh, language speaking circles. However, recently we've uh, been seeing the rise of the word called unnecessary, which is also quite unfamiliar, but it's also uh, an amalgam of two different words. As you know, unnecessary means that it is not needed. This word unnecessary has been brought together with the English word for worker as in proletariat standing for unnecessary. This neologism means that some workers will be unnecessary under the fourth industrial revolution, which is what I'm going to talk about a little bit later on. Basically, you can think of unnecessary as people who are not economically viable, who are not members of the working population. We've heard this word unnecessary come out under the fourth industrial revolution. But if we look back in history, way back in the first industrial revolution, so this will be about 200 years or so ago, even at that time, there were those uh, classes of people called the disabled bodied. These disabled bodied people were construed as unnecessary. It's the first generation disabled activists in Korea often uh, use the term parasitic consumers, that disabled people were being treated as if they're parasitic consumers because uh, the disabled or as a class seen as the unnecessary class. For example, last year, about two thirds of disabled body people had never held a job. They couldn't be classified as unemployed because they had never had a job, so they were therefore categorized as economically inactive. In the past, in the first and second industrial revolutions, people considered the disabled to be unnecessary. But now under the fourth industrial revolution, many of the employments, many of the jobs are being displaced by robots. Many middle managerial positions are becoming minimized and professional workforce is also being uh, replaced by AI. They have to compete against AI. So in the near future, the boundaries between able-bodied and disabled-bodied workers will be newly drawn. This means that right now, uh, thus far, it was only the disabled people who were seen as unnecessary members of the population, but now this is going to become broader and expanded in scope. We understand labor as something, it's an activity that creates value, it's a valuable activity. In capitalist society, we see labor as something that creates profit in the accounting sense of the word. Well, for example, if you look at investment banks, the investment banks will invest in an area and this would accrue as a profit in the accounting sense. And you might wonder, does that directly translate to value for us? That's the kind of society we live in because we live live under the themes of capitalist exchange of value. But if we do not fight against this kind of capitalist understanding of value and profit, this violence will come to be perpetrated against all of us, not just disabled body people, but everyone. So to overcome this kind of situation, we have to rethink the idea of work. And there is a discourse that can support this kind of argument. And this is not a far-fetched idea that came out of nowhere. This idea is that of public citizen labor and job guarantee system. These discourses have already been made available in the past. And this is the kind of argument that we can use when we work against the local government and the central government. So if I were to talk a little bit about public citizen work, this is a concept. It's a newly introduced concept, but it's more than a concept. In fact, it's an actual specific system, a kind of institution, if you will. If we look at the concept of public citizen work, this is what it is. That work is a right afforded to all citizens, and therefore labor must be guaranteed at the public level. This is a fundamental understanding of a public citizen work, and but this is not something that I came up with on my own. Uh, the idea was first promoted by Ulrich Beck, the German uh, sociologist, who became known in Korea as well for his discussions on risk society. In 1999, uh, Beck wrote a uh, a book called Shonen New Arbashtweit, and here 
book, Beck first introduced the concept of citizen work, and it's in German, but I am not very good in uh, pronunciation. My German pronunciation, but basically it's a uh, Burgarbeit. Arbeit in Korea is known as part-time work, but in fact, it actually means labor. Here, it means citizen labor or citizen work. Beck diagnosed the concept of full employment as a mistaken call that was only possible under a blind religious faith for the markets in an industrial society and in the second modernity. But he said that a laborless society is not the answer either. Of course, if we can have a society where nobody has to work, that'd be great, but that's never going to happen. There will always be somebody who works and there will always be somebody who doesn't work. So Beck said that a laborless society is not the solution. And instead, the solution was that we change the concept of labor and expand the activities that fall under the category of labor. So various political, social and public activities that can be organized within civil society should be recognized as labor and compensated as such. And we must abolish the boundaries between employed and unemployed and instead establish new norms for resource distribution. As I mentioned before, this book came out in 1999. Here, I brought an actual copy of the book myself. This was published in Germany in 1999. It was translated into Korean in 1999 as well, which is quite amazing. The English language version came out in 2000. You would see the red underlined areas there. It says on the last sentence that it says that with this expanded idea of employment, they would include forms of self-organized artistic, cultural, and political civil labor such as cultural activity, political activity. All of these different discussions have already been in place since the 1990s, as you can see. So Beck's concept was citizen work, but I included the word public in this definition to say public citizen work. Now, public citizen work is based on the awareness that labor is not a product. The market will continue to exist, but even without a market, we have to engage in labor because labor is a fundamental right, as I mentioned. And for that kind of labor to stand, it has to be public citizen work. The market is where commodities are bought and sold. However, the market does not guarantee rights. It's fundamentally economic in scope. It's where value and profits and commodities are exchanged. So it's not a place for rights to be guaranteed. Ultimately, this means that public citizen work has to be guaranteed by the state because it's public in nature. There are many academics who argue for this, such as uh, Karl Polanyi. Karl Polanyi is a leftist uh, academic, but even without Karl Polanyi, for example, I mentioned the, we often talk about the ILO, the International Labor Organization, and already in 1944, at the first General Assembly of the ILO, which was held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they adopted a declaration concerning the aims and purposes of the ILO, which is called the Philadelphia Declaration. And here, the first sentence states that labor is not a commodity. And how do you understand the ILO? It's a union of capitalist states. It's not a collective of leftist organizations. It's a union of capitalist market economies. And it's not even something that was only done at the international level. If we look at the Korean constitution, there is something similar stated there. You might wonder that, hey, I've read the constitution and I didn't see anything there. But in fact, you would find the spirit of this concept in, enshrined in the Korean constitution because the Korean constitution states several rights and duties of the citizens. There are two things that are seen simultaneously as a right and a duty. They are work and education. We've asked for the right to education and the right to work. The current constitution says that there are four duties, the right and the duty to pay taxes, to work, to receive education. So as you can see, working and becoming educated are a right that we have, but they're also a duty that the state has placed on us. And it's not just any duty, it's one of the top four duties 
which is to say that the state should guarantee it. If we look at the example of education, for example, education is also a right and a duty, which is why the state guarantees education through public education. If we were to consider a country without public education, let's say there is only private education in Korea. If that were the case, the Korean Constitution cannot say that education is a right and a duty. The same goes for work. So again, this is included in the Korean Constitution. Again, there are these arguments made by the ILO and an argument that is enshrined in the Korean Constitution. This is something that we have to understand fundamentally to make our arguments. With this concept of public citizen work, in 2004, at another discussion seminar, I have brought up the concept of public citizen work for severely disabled people. But around then at the time we were asking for the abolition of a certain relevant laws and so we were very busy and this was placed on the back burner. But if we were to look at the details of this a little bit more, I would like to say that public citizen work should include the three fundamental activities needed for an active life, as suggested by Hannah Arendt, as you know, the famous uh, philosopher. Hannah Arendt has said that there are three fundamental activities needed for an active life, that of labor, work, and action. Basically, these are economic activities, cultural activities, and political activities. In many cases, these are already found in our society. Political activities are conducted by political party members, politicians, activists like myself, and cultural activities are engaged in by many cultural workers. They're compensated for their artistic activity. So, as you can see, these three activities, economic, cultural, and political, are all already being compensated in our current market economy. So it's not something that I pulled out of thin air. However, the fourth industrial revolution, there are some works, there are some activities that we need to engage in to fulfill our biological desires and our most primal urges. But going forward, there's going to be fewer and fewer laborers, which means that we have to create a new form of labor, which is by political or social or artistic or cultural activity, as already mentioned by Ulrich Beck and others. This is the discussion that has been uh, in, has been brought to the fore by many of these civic societies and civic organizations. Now, moving to job guarantee system. The job guarantee might sound a little bit vague, but this is actually a very unique and singular concept. Recently, we had the presidential election in uh, Korea. There are two major political parties and they have huge dominance in uh, our politics, but one party, one progressive political party, Said, uh, uh, there said the candidate of this party said that she is going to guarantee jobs for everyone who wants to work in Korea. The job guarantee system, people mostly do not think it as a specific kind of institutionalized program. They must, they just simply think of it as the government trying to provide some more jobs to the state, but this is an actual concrete system. And if you take a look at the slide from the left hand, in 2017 Kiet, the Korean Institute of Economics and Trade put out a report on job guarantee versus a universal income. And this book that I've also brought here, the job guarantee, which was published last year. This is the uh, translator version. And on the right hand side, you would see another uh, report that was issued by several researchers here in Korea about job guarantee. The job guarantee system is not necessarily a difficult concept. I said before that the market is going to continue to exist and the market is going to absorb a lot of the jobs. However, there are many people who would be 
isolate it from and marginalize from the market. In that case, the governments would be the employer of last resort. For those people who fail at finding jobs in the market, the governments would be the last resort employer and provide a living wage to everyone who is willing to work. We all have a right to vote, as you know. But if you say, maybe I don't want to vote, you don't have to vote. But if you want to vote, you can vote at any time. It's the same thing with labor. If you don't want to work, that's fine. Maybe some people are so rich that they don't have to work, they don't feel like working, and that's fine. They don't have to work. But if you want to work, then you should be guaranteed work. I'm not going to go into detail with this particular theory, but some post-Keynesian econ economists have continued to ask for this theory called modern money theory, MMT. The MMT school has been arguing for a job guarantee, and in fact, in the U.S., in the last presidential election, many of the MMT school economists joined the Democrat camp. And as I mentioned before, the universal job guarantee system was also a political campaign by a member, uh, a presidential candidate of a progressive party in Korea in the latest election. Ultimately, they are very similar in terms of their policy direction. And in, with this book, the author says the same thing. Labor should be seen as education, or it should be seen as social security. The translator of this book provided this paraphrase of the book, and it says here that the fourth industrial revolution would allow for labor-saving technological advantages, but it would reduce the number of jobs. If we want to continue to live, we need to depend on work, and we would always need work. A lot of the work has been, a lot of this kind of social work has already been done by many different cooperatives and social enterprises and so on and so forth. So. If these voluntary civic activities that already exist are accepted and expanded as job security programs, then we can create more stable jobs. This new work paradigm is closely related to the other challenge of our era, the climate crisis. To overcome the climate crisis, we are engaging in several efforts such as going carbon neutral or transitioning to a post-carbon economy. Korea also installed the 2050 Carbon Neutrality Committee in 2021. When that happens, what happened was for Korea to rid ourselves of fossil fuels, this means that we're going to get rid of half of all coal-fired power plants, leading to a loss of tens of thousands of jobs, and many internal combustion engine cars will be replaced by EVs. This will lead to the loss of nearly half of all jobs in the automotive production and repair and maintenance sector. What's going to happen to these jobs? The government should uh, protect these jobs. In other countries, they've often uh, talked about the policy called the Green New Deal. I'm sure you've heard of the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is a comprehensive progressive policy package to respond to climate crisis. And this is not just the case of other countries. In the case of Korea as well, the Public Policy Institute for People published this book called Public Labor Movement Strategies in the Era of Climate Crisis. And in this book, the Institute suggested here, what you see on the red, that the state provide climate jobs directly in the public sector. And here, they directly reference public citizen work. Oh, even without the discussions on work, because we have to overcome the climate crisis, especially in light of the fourth industrial revolution, we need to have a just transition. And all of this is part of this discourse. So by conclusion, I can say that there are two paradigms that are defining our lives, the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution and the climate crisis. And here, we must transition to a new labor paradigm with public citizen work and job guarantee. This is not just for disabled body persons, but this is something that we need for all of our society. The rights-based 
public jobs issue, which is a core argument by progressive a movement for persons with disabilities, is not just a policy for disabled body people, but the first step towards a society where no one will be left behind, a universal design for a work society, a labor society for all. If we don't all want to perish together, we have to do this together. We have to create this uh, first step. And we have to follow. We have to continue on down this road because if we maintain the status quo, everybody will become an unnecessary, as I mentioned before. So we have to transition our direction forward to a just transition for Korean society. And this kind of uh, argument is not groundless or baseless. It is founded on this actual discourse, an academic discourse. With that, I conclude my presentation. Yes. Listening to the presentation, I was able to feel that in the near future, I might become an unnecessary. And to prevent that, I would have to respond and I would have to prepare for that. But if this prepare, preparation would entail more productivity and more efficiency, I don't know what more I can do. So instead, I would have to try to work on what I can do to engage in more rights-based economic activity. Oh, you were introducing so many books, and I thought that maybe you were translating some of them, or maybe you were trying to promote some of the books here, but I don't think that was the case. The panelists also talked about job guarantee system which sounds great, but I think that some of the members of the audience uh, might have wondered to themselves that a job guarantee system, if it were to become a policy, if uh, the next uh, president or so uh, tries to go in that direction, perhaps the job guarantee, the jobs for other people might be guaranteed first and the severely disabled people might be placed in the last in the priority list. No, they might have felt that uh, that could also be a real danger that is opposed to them. But in any case, this is a kind of new expression or a new terminology uh, that was able to come out of the presentation, which was very interesting for me. Thank you. Now we are going to have a panel discussion. As we all know, in Gyeonggi province, we only hired a very small number of people for this program. And in Seoul and in other local governments, when they try to expand this prog program, they may have a little bit of confusion as to what this rights-based public work program or public employment program is all about. Um, it is important for them to understand the intention and the purpose behind the program, but when it comes to actual day-to-day -day work, they may be a little confused. So in this regard, I'd like to invite President Choi Yong-gi of the Korea Council of Centers for Independent Living, and he's going to be introducing some of the specific cases in Seoul metropolitan city. Please welcome him with a big hand. The rights-based employment, public employment program is a program to monitor the implementation of the UN uh, Convention. And so this is a campaign to monitor the situations. And it is not just an awareness raising um, campaign, but it is also about promoting employment of severely disabled persons because we believe that this type of work is also a labor. I didn't prepare slides, but I like to speak. In 2020, we had the pandemic that started and last year as well. So there was a lot of uncertainties. Back in 2019, the employment rate of disabled persons uh, that are older than 15 is not even 40%. So when you look at the, the average employment rate is 62.5%, uh, but the employment rate of disabled persons is still very low, and especially the employment percentage of severely disabled persons is very, very low. It means that severely disabled persons are not economically active. So in, 2006, in 2019, there was a survey 
on five types of severe disability, including developmental disability and uh, visual impairment and uh, brain-related disabilities. And according to the survey on the five types of disabilities, the survey found out that developmental disabilities and brain disabled persons were most disadvantaged in the labor market. And also there were many cases where minimum wage was not guaranteed. In 2017 and 2018, in the beginning of the Moon government, 810,000 public works were promised by President Moon. And at that time, many disability activists and um, disabled persons occupied some of the office spaces to demonstrate demanding work for disabled persons. And the minimum wage law is applied to those who are able to work, but they said that the minimum wage regulation was not applied to disabled persons because they, they are not able to engage in full time work. Therefore, disabled persons would only earn 50,000 won or 100,000 won or 400,000 won per month. So that was a very harsh reality. And in many cases, such works employed and, and done by disabled persons were considered social welfare or social work because there was this perception that disabled persons were not able to participate as laborers. And in our society, we tend to focus on productivity and efficiency. So by applying this lens, they, people may think that disabled persons are not as productive and not as efficient. So this has been a challenge. In the capitalist society, I understand that when you invest $1, you want to gain profit out of this investment by making more than $1. But when you think about the right to work by disabled persons, you cannot just apply the same criteria of productivity and efficiency. There are several issues and problems that you may encounter if you apply the same criteria. And in Seoul metropolitan city, in 2020, we started this program, uh, the moderator mentioned 2021, but we began this program in 2020. So then who would be subject to or who would benefit from this program? Let's say that there are regular works or regular jobs that are guaranteed by the Ministry of Welfare, where um, such jobs will be related to social welfare and social works. But for severely disabled persons, they are not even able to participate in such job opportunities because they, are, they have severe uh, limitations. But then this new program called This is Also Labor will be able to hire se severely disabled persons and um, those who with severe disabilities would be preferred. And here the three domains of work are advocacy works, arts and culture, and awareness raising educational work. So these are the three types of work. When it comes to doing some work, it means that these are the kinds of work that they can perform even with their uh, disabilities. So regardless of their disabilities. So these types of work are suitable for severely disabled persons. 
The moderator uh, asked whether there are other similar programs in other countries. There's no such a program outside of Korea, and I believe this is very innovative and unprecedented, and I think we need to ex export this model to other countries because this type of employment program is crucial for people with severe disabilities. Um, of the works for disabled persons, the welfare program um, used to have 56 hours a month, but this was actually a problem because those who are participating in this program, they are severely disabled. They need help and support. And especially for this developmental dis developmentally disabled persons, it takes longer uh, for them to perform a task than um, other people. So there were several practical challenges. So instead of 56 hours, they may go on to 60 hours. And for 60 hours of work, you can also get some additional incentive. And 60 hours qualifies that person to be able to utilize um, paid leaves and other, other welfare incentives. So there are several advantages of applying the 60-hour a week program. And in this way, there were a whole new experiences that could be experienced by severely disabled people. They, their age ranging from early 20s all the way to the 60s, and especially uh, the older participants were very happy that they were finally making money by doing some work. And because they are now laborers, they said some of them said that they would love to join a labor union. So these participants are not beneficiaries or recipients, but rather they are workers, they are laborers. They may not be able to hear or see, they may have some severe disabilities, but they are still legitimate workers and laborers, and they participate in work and get paid for that. So in this public works program for the severely disabled persons, they actually participate in promoting CRPD, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, and this convention has many articles, very meaningful articles about the rights of disabled persons. So these participants may go on the streets, carry out campaigns, they may do demonstrations, and to do that, we need to practice. So we have to practice a lot together. And at, for educational programs, uh, they would explain these rights, but also they are trained to go out on the street. So they would create uh, banners and they would um, create posters. And so they participate in these advocacy works. And some may think that this is not actual work or actual job. So some may have such questions, but I'd like to argue once again that this is a very meaningful work, very, very meaningful work. And the United Nations made it very clear that Korea has to raise awareness on the rights of people with disability, and there has been some um, challenges, and we were not making much progress. But here, based on rights, so based on CRPD, these program participants talk about their rights. They would do a press conference, they would monitor the um, facilities for disabled persons, and they will perform um, music or dance. They would do all kinds of advocacy works and uh, developmentally challenged people, they love to have fun. They love to play and they would love to have fun. There are other types of work available for disabled persons, but when you actually talk to the participants of this uh, rights-based employment program, you can find that they are very happy and they are very proud of what they're doing. And so I think it has a lot of meaning in this regard. 
I believe that we need to create more jobs under this program. Because I'm a discussant, I would like to ask some questions to the two presenters. First of all, to Mr. Kim. The Moon government announced that they would create more than 800,000 jobs in the public sphere. I wonder if such promise was kept. And I wonder if such jobs were also for disabled persons. I wonder if um, the quality of life of disabled persons has improved as a result. So that's my question to Mr. Kim and also to Dr. Ju. Recently, the president-elect Yoon song Nyol, who won the presidential election, said that he would create a lot of jobs. This is a very important statement. And he said he would focus on creating jobs led by the private sector. And he said he would praise and reward companies that create jobs. So this is actually a job creation driven by the private sector. But I wonder if this approach would lead to more jobs created for disabled persons. And I really wonder if we can leave this to the hands of the private sector, private companies, to create jobs for disabled people. So, starting with Seoul, now expanding to Gyeonggi province and Chuncheon and Gyeongnam. So, it is expanding to other provinces around Korea. The presidential candidate Lee Jae-myung, who used to be Gyeonggi province governor, said that he would create 30,000 public a citizen jobs for severely disabled when he got elected, but this would not be kept because he didn't get elected. But I wonder if the, it is the Ministry of Welfare um, who would take care of this or the Ministry of Labor and Employment who would have to address this. I think we need to make comparisons. Well, some say that jobs are the best welfare, and I believe that jobs-related issues should be addressed by the Ministry of Employment and Labor. So I hope that there will be more jobs created for disabled people uh, who would engage in advocacy activities, and they would become more um, independent and legitimate members of our society by their work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Choi. I think that uh, the center where uh, you are in is also going through different challenges. I think it's been two or uh, three years of challenges as a beneficiary of the uh, program. Uh, you have asked some questions to our two presenters, but we would like to hand over the microphone, first of all, to our next panelist, Director Ko Kwang Hyun of the Seoul Metropolitan Government for his comments, and then I'll turn to the other panelists for their responses. When we talk about rights-based work, we often say that rights is an end product, but we also ask that rights should be guaranteed, that uh, rights, we want to exercise our rights, and uh, we seek compensation. I think that people in the government might feel that this is uh, very difficult. It's a huge challenge to address because we're asking for rights and asking for compensation. And every year we're asking for all of these to be expanded even further. So I feel that Mr. Ko might have his work cut out for him. So I'm very curious to hear what he has to say today. Thus far, we've been talking about the need for jobs and how we must expand uh, these jobs going forward. So now we'd like to hear the uh, position of the Seoul government. Hello, I'm the Director of the Disability Welfare Policy Division at the SMG. Thank you very much for inviting me to this very meaningful forum, and I'm sorry that I'm only joining you online. I think 
that uh, when Mr. Park, uh, one of the organizers, asked me to come to this uh, session, I didn't know if uh, I could provide anything insightful. So at first I turned him down, but then they later said that Seoul is doing a lot of meaningful work for disabled persons, so they have asked me to come. I'm listening to uh, your presentations with my headset on, which was really helpful for me in really concentrating very hard to what you were saying. I was not distracted at all, and I was able to concentrate to what you said. I would like to comment very shortly on uh, my thoughts on the presentations and then talk about the job program that we have at Seoul for severely disabled persons. As you know, the right to work is a basic fundamental right that is protected in the Constitution. It's also a right uh, that allows for and enables life. And as the other presenters have said, the right to work is both a right and also a duty for all citizens in Korea. This means to say that persons with disabilities are not different from persons without disabilities. And under, against that understanding, we can see that the logic states that everyone, all of us, should be ensured this right and duty. Regarding the right to work of severely disabled persons, we have to really be considerate and provide a more detailed level of support. The two presentations that we were able to hear today would have huge implications for the Seoul Metropolitan Government. Just briefly, my own thoughts on the presentations. First, on this is also work. The presenter talks about the international context and the progress made. For example, in 1994, the uh, social policy white paper by the UN talked about the productive and compensated equal uh, right the, that should be guaranteed to disabled persons. And then the employment equality guidelines that came on the heels of that said that we uh, disabled persons should not be restricted in any way in pursuing their right to work. And then at the UN convention, it talks about the rights and dignity of disabled persons and it's a comprehensive and a fully uh, scoped convention. Internationally, there was much discussion on the right to work by PWD and many progress, much progress made on this journey. However, from the international point of view, we feel that here in Korea, we still need more consistent efforts made to raise awareness for the rights of PWD. So this means that we still have a lot of work left to do. At the Seoul Metropolitan Government, at the working level, since I'm working on a disability welfare, I've, I feel that what you've said is largely correct. So for example, Seoul has a lot of different programs aimed for pe persons with disabilities. For example, building different facilities and institutions in Gangseogu, Dungchun, we are planning to build an institution. And in Yangyang, in Gangwon-do, we are currently building a training center uh, for the disabled. But these plans are not being developed fully because of NIMBY and because of many people, many residents in the area who are opposing uh, this. And also, it's very difficult to get the necessary budget to work on these different projects because the authorities would say that they will only al al allow us a budget if we can deliver results. But as you know, when it comes to programs for PWD, it's difficult to rate the projects against a performance quota. It's difficult to pr deliver on a performance. If we could, we would try to provide a deliverable. But these programs have different values, and they should be looked at and interpreted differently. However, that is not necessarily the case right now. Although this does not 
uh, this is not in line with the theme of this session, but when it comes to awareness raising, I have uh, recently tried to hear the opinions of visually impaired people. What can we do to try to have many more PWD ride and take the bus? This means that we have to improve the bus stations and also try to lower uh, the buses. But what they said was that the visually impaired people do not even see public buses as a means of transportation because there is a service that allows them to know what buses uh, are coming, the numbers of the buses, but they don't know exactly the location, the spot where the bus is going to stop. When the bus comes to a stop, the bus driver has to tell them what number this is, and the bus driver has to stop at the right stop. However, that is not currently the case. And also, inside the buses, there are these uh, bus stop bells that people can press, PWD can press for a slower bus stop openings, but these bells are not in the consistent location against all the buses. And so that's difficult to use as well, which surprised me because I realized that I was not being sensitive to the concerns and needs of the PWD. The second presentation had to do with disability and labor in the fourth industrial revolution, where uh, the panelists introduced the concept of public citizen work, which I've never heard before, and also propose the adoption of a job guarantee system. Because work is a right and a duty, and it has to be guaranteed by the state. This is what is in line with what I said before in the opening statements where I said that labor is enshrined in the Constitution. We have to expand the scope of this other than just productive economic activity that other social, cultural, uh, public benefit activities should all be recognized as labor. I think that this is in line with uh, the program that I'm going to introduce later on, Seoul's uh, Job Placement Program for Severely Disabled Persons. The compensation for public citizen work should be living wages, and I agree with that. However, we also have to be considerate of the current uh, budgets at our disposal. The activities of public citizen work should be designated by citizens and not the government. And I can agree with uh, the principle, but I think that we would have to have further discussions on that. Along with the fourth industrial revolution, we're seeing the eradication of many jobs and that the government should step up and provide for this loss of jobs. And I think that we would need a more intricate and more detailed design of how we can carry that out. Regarding the two presentations, I can talk about the uh, rights based personalized public work for severely disabled persons in uh, Seoul since uh, 2020. This began at the end of 2019, but the uh, COVID pandemic worsened and this led to uh, job freeze. This was very fatal on, on the situation for uh, persons with disabilities for protective employment and public employment for the persons with uh, disabilities who are participating in these social work, their facilities, their workplaces shut down, leading to loss of income, and they were not able to maintain their livelihoods. The public institutions provided some uh, public work, but some of these public jobs can only be accessed by people who can demonstrate a level of basic proficiency. There are these changes in the environment, which were very negatively impactful on severely disabled persons. So many civic organizations for disabled persons have called for these jobs to be guaranteed by the state and that for various different kinds of activities to also be recognized as labor and should be compensated. So in April of 2020, the Seoul Solidarity Against Discrimination for the Disabled proposed public jobs and in July, we started a prototype of rights-based public work program. In 2020, the budget was 1.2 billion. 
providing jobs to 260 PWD in six months. And in 2021, the budget was increased to 2.5 billion and increased the number of participating people to 275. And in 2022, to support the basic uh, livelihoods of the PWD, we also dispatch a dedicated task force, a 1 to 15 ratio. In this year, we have 350 people participating, about half and half uh, to, for time base and full employment. For time base, we were providing income uh, income guarantee and for the rest we are providing some level of experience as you can probably tell the rights based work are segmented to several different kinds of activities so first is advocacy related efforts monitoring the programs for disabled looking at online sites monitoring them to see if there are any uh, sites or areas on the internet that are violating uh, the uh, rights for PWD and we also have many people engaging in promotional activities as well. Secondly are cultural activities, so for example artistic activities such as painting or singing or dancing or theater performances or writing. Many of these different cultural and artistic activities that are creative in nature are also in, uh, included in this. So, for example, if a disabled person engages in performance art, in a performance art piece, that is also inclus included as labor. And then there are various instructor, instructor and teacher positions as well. So providing instruction and training to non-disabled persons, maybe providing musical instrument teaching or training, providing some kinds of uh, training and instructions on their own uh, area of expertise, that is also compensated. The compensation is my, uh, minimum wage. We looked and referenced the MOHW's job placement program, and so we were uh, to, we were able to enforce uh, minimum wage of about 9,161 per hour, which equates to about 950,000 or not about 910,000 to the time based and full employment uh, jobs. Oh. If we look at the selection criteria, the MOHW looks at participation, past participation. Well, if they look at severely disabled persons who have not participated for the last three years, then for the last one year, then females, then for those who receive a basic uh, welfare. But the sole government selection criteria is a little bit different. We look at severely disabled persons and also look at deinstitutionalization to try to provide independent and autonomous living. Oh, we place priority to deinstitutionalize persons with severe disabilities, then persons with two or more disabilities, then uh, persons who have not participated in these programs, or uh, people who have participated in programs but who still have severe disabilities, and then female persons with disabilities, and so on. If we compare the jobs, the MOHW, the Ministry of Health and Welfare, has time based and welfare based, so 20 hours a week and 14 hours a week. Seoul also has a time base of 20 hours a week, but for the welfare base, it was increased for in for, from 14 to 15 hours. This means that that is equivalent to about an additional 60 hours a month with these extra hours, the persons with disabilities can be eligible for extra benefits such as extra income and even retirement pay. The Ministry of Health and Welfare provides uh, assist, provides jobs in cafeterias, libraries, and post offices. The Seoul Metropolitan Government 
as I mentioned before, provides cultural activity, artistic activity, awareness raising and advocacy. And we try to stay away from production or manufacturing kinds of jobs. We're still very early on in the process, so there are not a lot of many results that we can uh, provide to you right now. But I can illustrate several case examples. Uh, I'm sorry, Director Ko, but uh, it would be nice if you can wrap up. Okay, so yes, we are. We have several great uh, case examples. And our expectation is that other than many of these great cases, that ultimately these persons with disabilities can be productive and positive members of society, and that would allow for them to be even healthier uh, in the future. Of course, there are some challenges in our program, but so uh, I guess I can uh, talk about that later on if uh, time allows. But I would like to conclude with this, that persons with severe disabilities, for them, the concept of work and the idea of work would be more desperate for them. It's a way for them to generate income, but also a way for them to participate in society and to find and identify value. So rights-based pub public work, I think that program is quite meaningful and valuable. SMG is going to continue to pursue more of these rights-based uh, job programs so that many persons with severe disabilities can be more independent and autonomous m members of uh, our society. I'm sorry that I was speaking at length. Thank you very much. I can see that the Seoul Metropolitan Government is working really hard, and I believe that uh, Seoul's experiences can be good reference points for other local governments. And um, I understand that he's been involved in, or Seoul Metropolitan Government has been involved in improving policies for employment of disabled persons. And now Seoul Metropolitan Government, severely disabled, disabled persons are able to pay for uh, their so pension and as well. So I think that this will be should be replicated in other uh, local governments. And as a moderator, I was supposed to be a timekeeper, but I just wanted to give um, sufficient time for each participant. So it uh, has gone over time, but there are many people who are watching this session uh, on YouTube. I don't see any question, but here in the offline audience, if you have any questions, we will address them. Them. And then Mr. Choi asked questions to the two presenters, so we're going to cover them at the end before we wrap up the session. So in this audience, in this room, if you have any questions or if you have any comments, then please raise your hand. Thank you for being very cooperative. Then. I understand that there's no question, but if there's any burning question, let us know. Okay, then Mr. Choi asked questions to Dr. Chu, first of all, about the government policy of under the new government of creating jobs led by the private sector and whether such jobs will also be for people with disability. And also a question to Mr. Kim was about President Moon's policy of creating more than 800,000 jobs and how many jobs were created for disabled persons and whether such job creation initiative benefited or improved the quality of life of disabled persons. I'd like to e ask each presenter to address these questions. Okay. Uh, when you think about employment of disabled persons, as this title indicates, it is about value and perception and integration or inclusion. In Korea, it is a capitalistic market economy. So our economy is mainly led by private companies with a lot of competition. So this is a prevalent type of employment. Therefore, we have many challenges in terms of employing disabled persons because of the structural characteristics. I do not believe that the private sector led job creation would promote social cohesion and inclusion and creating jobs for disabled persons. Uh, employment or work 
for disabled persons and work by disabled persons should be recognized as a basic and fundamental right. And if it cannot be guaranteed in the private sector, it has to be guaranteed by the public sector, meaning government authorities. And I hope that the government authorities will increase their awareness on this so that there will be more such employment opportunities for disabled persons in Korea. Thank you. So I don't know why he felt the need to ask the question because I feel that he already knows the answer. Under the Moon Jae-in administration, they were very uh, committed and ambitious to many different programs, but many of them did not uh, come to pass, or even if they did, they came to pass a little bit later on. Not just when it comes to public uh, citizen work, but many of the different uh, statistics were not even announced until later on. So now that we have this new incoming administration, I think that some of the uh, policies might go backwards. However, when it comes to mobility rights and activity restrictions, we've always done this in this kind of direction where we would argue against and lobby the local governments and start from there and then ultimately the local governments would force the central government to move in the same direction. So hopefully we can do the same thing. We were able to see that some of the good movements came out in the very smallest of local governments. So likewise, we can protest against the local governments and try to inspire change there and try to find some achievements there. And then hopefully this will change the central government. I don't think it's really about the numbers, about how many jobs, about 810K jobs or 10K jobs or et cetera. I think that we have to really ask for our rights. And so if we look a little bit farther, I don't think it's necessarily important what the central authority does, that we just shouldn't be disappointed, but continue to uh, engage in our fight. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Choi, are you, so you had this uh, question um, because you had certain intention, right? So I hope that your question was addressed. Then any questions? Okay, so there's one in the audience. Can the staff give the mic? Thank you for this opportunity. I'd like to ask a question to Mr. Ko from Seoul Metropolitan Government. So these participating workers, they want to have more consistent and stable work. So for, for them to continue to participate in the program, what should be done, what is required? Because uh, for severely disabled persons, it may not be easy for them to continue on, but work can uh, really support them their life financially. So if they want to participate in a consistent manner, first of all, the pro program has to be maintained and it has to be expanded. And there are several areas we need to strengthen. First of all, when it comes to the selection criteria, we need to be more transparent and more fair. So because there may be some complaints about that. And then also when it comes to the supporting organizations, they need to strengthen their capacity and capabilities. And people who are working for such organizations should become more capable. So we are preparing for an evaluation criteria for these participating organizations that can provide support for uh, disabled persons so that in the entire process, there will be more transparency and fairness in the selection selection process. And if we improve in these areas, I believe and I hope that this program will continue on. And to do so, we need to uh, be able to secure budget. And to do so, we need to have some uh, visible accomplishments. So I think these are what is needed. I hope that was a, a sufficient answer to this question.
Uh, we are well over time, so I cannot add on much, but I believe that uh, the evaluation process is crucial. Uh, we don't have a, an evaluation process put in place yet, so I understand that work is now underway to do so. Uh, the implementation bodies or the supporting organizations, they need to be more capable in terms of their staff and their support capabilities. As a head of the organization, such organization, I like to say that at least one person, a st supporting a person to four or five uh, severely disabled persons should be provided. Only then this program can be supported in a sustainable manner. If there's no further question, then I believe that now in this era of the fourth industrial revolution, we need to reconceptualize the definition, the idea of work. If we do not change our position of work, then we may all become unnecessary in this um, technology driven economy. So I think it is crucial for us to revisit this idea of work and labor. And in this regard, I'd like to express my appreciation to the presenters and the panel members, as well as the audience. Uh, let me wrap up the session with that. Thank you very much.